Hi, I want to talk to you about farming. The industrialisation of farming and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we may do farm too much. I agree with that 100%. Now, I've been seeing quite a bit about farmers getting grief. Okay, I want to just talk to you first a bit of history of your farmers. Six farmers in 1840 decided to uh, uh, meet by a tree because they were discussing the fact that if they should, they're going to, to talk to their local earl who owned their land, owned their property, owned their farms. Basically, uh, uh, you do understand, if an earl, if he was sold up, they would be a part of the deal. Uh, we've not long, I think, abolished slavery, a form of it. Okay, so these six guys met by a uh, tree and they were deported for that and sent to Australia. These were the toll puddle martyrs. Four of them came back after they were acquitted. Just wanted a bit more say. They weren't going to start a revolution. They weren't about uh, destroying the... Fun destroying the system they wanted just a little bit more say a little bit less rent <clears throat> so they could do what you and i do and survive so there is your beginnings of the workers rights and the unions they are the godfathers i feel i believe one of the first unions to in this country was farming and fishing now there's another industry there that's overworked and i agree with that and i totally and utterly but what is fishing and farming look, got that has another jobs? Right. I used to live in a Christian community opposite Noel Edmonds up in Oakhampton. And I've seen the letter. And Noel Edmonds tries to get a shut down. And ex the council turned around to him and said, the Samuel family, this is the guy who ran it, I've been farming in this area for 350 years plus. He thinks he goes back to Neolithic, Iron Age, Bronze Age, Money, Money Age. His brother has got a farm 20 mile, uh, five miles that way, another one that way, and his dad's got a small one that way. Bron, his wife, are from the other side of Oakhampton, and guess what they're all from? Farming. It's the same in the fishing industry. These are the two of the dangerous jobs you would not want to do, really. I, I spent six months on a farm, working on a farm, and it's hard graft, and it's hard. It's a bloody hard, and I mean that. Um, so these industries are very family orientated. They're local. People who work on your current farms don't come, they're not like, they don't get on a train and come here, come to the farm. They live in the area. They are guys that know it. And once again, family in the industry. I would say about one, maybe one and a half, two percent of the people in farming and fishing are in it without any link to it. It is a family thing. It's an, in, it's an in family thing. But they could grow crops, Kev. Right. The people who have meat farms have a reason to do meat because their land isn't good. So they went to meat. So the other lot went, oh, this land is really good for growing. Somerset is the breadbasket of, uh, of, uh, of the country because it's very watery. This area is very good. Hops is really good in Kent because of the, of the, ch of the chalk. You wouldn't grow those hops further up the country. And I mean, literally, literally... You could go about 30 miles and those crops would not, they'd grow. But what? So again, so you can't replace another. The other thing is, if you've got all your farmers now, there's 30,000 people plus. There's around about 40,000 people in the meat farming trade, full stop. 45. Doing, growing growing wheat and barley and all that, that would bring the prices down. More farmers, more, less money. Less farmers, 
more money. So if they all went over to me, it would be the same. It's, an, it's a job and a way of life I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Really, really, it's difficult. It's really hard. And a lot of people are getting screwed over. So my farming, my anti-meat friends, and, and, and I'm, I, I don't eat red meat. I, I'm dairy free and I, I eat chicken and fish. That's it. Um, I'm going on about this. What are you going to do with that 30 to 40,000 people? Where are these jobs you're going to find them? They did the very same thing in Wales and around the country. They closed the mines down and there was no work. My friend Kerry lived in, 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 in Trenny Revel in the Rwanda Valley. And uh, every day, you'd open the curtains, there'd be blokes walking up the street. And then one day, like that, there weren't. The only per the people he knew were employed at the time were the post office people and the people who drove the buses. And they were mainly taking them to uh, the unemployed centre. One of his mates had a breakdown. Couldn't go in anymore after a week of it. Just sat there crying. The, 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 the bus stop was around the corner. He was literally dropping them off outside and coming to pick them back up. Guys he knew, grew up with. That's the effect. That's the effect you will have on farming. The jobs are very minimal. They do this. This is how governments do this. This is what happened in the Industrial Revolution. <clears throat> it brought people in. He was going to work for a shilling a week. What are you going to pay? What do you want to? It's about control. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know. I don't know where you're going to find these jobs. And I bet you've got the job you want because you study for it and you like it. Well, can't they work in a factory? Why can't you work in a factory? A happy workforce is a good workforce. This is about control. And they're being controlled and manipulated. The fact we import meat and all sorts of other farming and fishing stuff is a crime, I believe. Yes, we should cut down on fishing, maybe. Maybe we should cut down on our meat intake, yes. But you've got to understand, this is people's livelihoods. Don't, don't fight the workers, fight the boss. Fight the bosses. Peace, love and out.